The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advice professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Discover a world of advice. Join Matt Heiner, CEO of Net Wealth, as he chats to industry professionals and thought leaders on the latest technologies, business models, changing demographic patterns, and general trends impacting wealth management. Listen at netwealth.com.au forward slash between meetings. This ad is presented by Net Wealth Investments Limited and does not consider individual circumstances. Seek professional advice and read the relevant PDS to determine if Net Wealth is appropriate for you. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Patrick Gardner and I miss Peter Diamantidis. Today, I'm joined by Martin Morris, the founder of Engagement Hub, a platform aimed at enhancing the experience between clients and advisors. Martin will tell us more about the inception of the platform in just a moment, but what he has built is a solution designed to revolutionize the way financial advisors operate, fostering transparent communication, simplifying workflows, and then ultimately providing a more effective and enjoyable advisory experience always with the client at the center, simplifying financial advice for clients and enabling advisors to easily articulate and demonstrate the value they add to clients. I started off by asking Martin what is the oldest piece of technology he still owns, whether he still uses it. So you'll probably laugh at me when I answer this, but I do still use a shop calculator that I bought in in 1987, when I was at uh, when I was at uni, you were joking. So that's year of uni, and I do use it. years old. Have you? I mean, is that battery powered? Like, is that just work the whole way through? Tiny little battery, so that's the the biggest challenge. I don't use it a lot, so the batteries last fairly long. Oh, but yeah. um, that's the biggest challenge is when I, it's almost like a watch battery. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, that's that's amazing. There's literally a testimonial on your website that says you've created the iPhone for financial services. I think if I receive a compliment like that, it'd be very hard for me to focus and I'd probably just go straight to the wardrobe, uh, throw on my best pair of blue jeans and a black skivvy, like um, good old Steve. But when you need to focus and get deep work done, how do you block out distractions? So, two, I mean, the two, the two times that I really need to be focusing and the one time is sometimes when I'm sitting at my desk at work, yep. um, switch the phone off, take everything off the table because focus isn't my strong area. So at the moment there's things lying around, I'm all over the place. Yeah. Um, I give myself probably an hour at a time, max, and uh, and edit. And then these headphones that you see me wearing right now, yeah. you could often find me sitting in a coffee shop or a hotel with these headphones on and listening to absolutely nothing but trying yeah. to block out block out the noise and and trying to do some work. But um, focus has never been my, my strongest area, I've got to say. Okay, but you're aware of it and you've obviously taken steps to make sure you can focus. That's great. Okay, so Engagement Hub, I'm really keen to jump in and learn more about what you've built and how you've sort of got to this point. Where does Engagement Hub sit in the advice tech space? Alone is probably the answer that I would give you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the background for... Background for this piece of tech is really the fact that I've been a practitioner for the best part of 30 odd years and technology has evolved immensely. I've seen some really great pieces of software. I use a lot of time, um, always ready to experiment and try something else. But what I've found more and more over the last 10 years as regulations up the ante, so every piece of software has been built around compliance. Compliance has been the core and the center of every single piece of technology that I'm finding. 
Yep. And somewhere in this whole roadshow, we've forgotten that there's a client. And I've actually just thought, what about putting the client at the center? And if we give the client a great experience, we do the right things, we're going to tick off all those compliance boxes anyway. So the compliance officers that I've sat down with and shown this to are loving what we're doing, but that's almost a byproduct. It's not the intention. So this is an engagement software aimed at creating and enhancing the experience with being client and advisor. And then I've been told that you've got a group of advisors actively using the software. You're obviously an advisor yourself. You've got your practice. Is that in that's in Sydney? In Sydney. It's it obviously helps when you've got an advisor building tools for advisors. How like what did version one look like? What was that sort of minimum viable product? And then obviously you've taken that out and added to that over time. But what was that first version of what you built? What did that look like? Maybe maybe a bit of background is is useful right now because that will tell that'll take me to the minimum viable product. So yep. over the last eight years, I would say I've been doing a lot of work in South Africa, training South African financial advisors on what I call the old world to the new world transition. Yep. Because regulation's coming in in a big way in South Africa, but it's nowhere near where we are in Australia. I had a relatively large practice in South Africa. We employed 23 people. I think we had one and a half billion under management. We looked after 50 or 60 pension funds. So I have a reasonable amount of credibility there. And a whole bunch of the companies that own dealer groups have got me involved in training. And what I've realized is as I'm showing people templates that I thought were normal, yep. the advisors over there were saying, wow, can we have can we have a bit of this? So I was giving yeah, them the yeah. templates. I was giving them PDFs all the time. And then somebody suggested to me, why don't you make a hub for these templates? Why don't you put a bunch of these forms, a form for file notes, a form for action items, a form for um, what we did for you during the course of the year? Why don't you put this onto a site or a portal that people can access it easier? So that was the minimum, that was the route to the minimum viable product is putting four or five forms together, which we did. I then started uh, doing a lot of work with advisors there about developing advice philosophies. And I had built a lot of tech for myself in Excel and I was using this in Excel. But what I realized is every piece of Excel was a standalone piece of software. So I started then finding developers and saying, can we put this all in one home? Can each piece talk to each other? Can the asset management piece talk to the insurance piece? Can we, while we're dealing with cash flow, can we see how that impacts the client's goals? Um, so the minimum viable product continues to grow. And um, mm. the challenge with that I found with, with the software is it, it never stops. So what exactly. I thought was going to be my end game a year or a year and a half ago is so far removed from where we are today. And the, the list and the roadmap is is so big at the moment. Yeah. Far out. So obviously there's prioritizing going on there and you've got a team behind you as well. So I assume um, you're relaying that feedback pretty quickly and then things are being or changes are being made. So would you say the flagship functionality now is those forms, like the repertoire of forms or those client engagement tools? That's probably the flagship because that's that's where somebody can start tomorrow and within five or ten minutes be using the system really, really efficiently, using ten or twelve of those forms without any explanation. And I guess that's where that that really nice comment from that uh, from that one advisor in South Africa came from because he just gave it to his back office and all of a sudden his clients were getting getting these forms and getting this information and he sent me that, that comment which which I said to him, Can I can I throw into the website? Saying that, we've developed a bunch of modules that have become far more exciting than the forms and things like we've a values conversation. And a really exciting goals conversation where you take the clients through a, through an experience and they move their goals around the tree. And while they're doing that, so the calculator in the background is is working things out. We've developed a, a risk profiling tool. Uh, we're about to launch within the next two weeks um, our tasks, um, yep. our directive tasks, which you can share with the clients or you you can hide from the clients. So so the flagship and the starting point was certain the forms. But I think it's evolved significantly since then. Yeah. No, that's great. And then so you mentioned, obviously, you've got the development coming there. And a clients, so they're logging in to interact with what's been assigned to them or they will be with the tasks, et cetera. Does that then ping the advisor or the team to say, this client has done this? Yeah. Or are you, spending, are you now spending most of your time in Engagement Hub 
um, from a backstage point of view? Like, how does that sort of work? So, two quick answers to that. The, the first one is the email is functionality set up. So, if you or a client um, make some changes, yep. you both have the ability to notify each other by email. So, you, so I would get an email from a client to say, um, Patrick's got onto the system, he's updated, he's put a new form on the system, or he's completed a form, yeah, then I would log in and do it, or I can do the same, or I don't need to do the same. Um, what we've actually found with one or two of our advisors are using Iris quite extensively yep. using X-Plan. Um, a couple of the advisors have actually continued to use Iris, which we strongly recommend they do, but the advisor themselves has given up their license and it's just the administration, the back office that's done it because they're finding that this is going to be their their full on engagement with the clients. Amazing. So obviously you've got the Iris integration there. Just from looking at the website and having a quick play around with the online tools you've got or the calculators rather. So I think you've got an insurance calculator and a sort of I wouldn't say basic financial model, but more of a back of the envelope financial model. Are you finding that instead of going the fully-fledged iris modeling tools that maybe advisors are now going, this really does not matter so much than actually the client having the clarity of simple inputs and simple outputs rather than, say, the client wants to buy a new car in their 15th year of retirement in 2036 and it might make the model fall apart. Like, are you seeing – I guess my question is, are you seeing a more simple – advice experience when it comes to uh, generating advice rather than the fully-fledged give me absolutely everything and we'll create this panacea plan that's gonna, that we're going to live by um, for the next 15, 20 years of retirement? So to, I'm glad you asked that question. So I could just clarify something. The two tools that you saw on the website, the calculator for the retirement and the insurance, those are, as you say, back of an envelope pretty picture sort of calculators. Those are not meant to be financial planning tools. Those are what we call lead magnets. Yep. So the advisors can take the embed codes, um, personalize that, put it onto their website, and it's a way of of attracting clients. In fact, um, in August last year, I literally put it on my website probably three weeks before, and I picked up a uh, an actuary and his wife who were just about to retire he was playing with a calculator, called me and said, is this, I just want to ask you about some of the assumptions. Um, so I thought, well, is this ASIC? Is this a real yeah. client? Is, who's, yeah. who's on the phone? Oh, yeah. Mystery shopper. Yeah. Exactly. So I was extremely cautious in my responses. I suggested that he come in and we, we have a better conversation. Anyway, um, he came on board. He invested two and a half million dollars with us. But those are, those are what we call lead magnets. So a potential yep. client could get onto the site, play with that, request a, um, Tips, tips and myths about retirement, tips and myths about insurance. They'll get a, a very pretty PDF email through to him. The advisor will get notified that a client's been on their website and is interested and he has the client's contact details and, yep. and things. We've also subsequently introduced a budget and a balance sheet tool that do the same thing. When it comes to actual financial planning, we do have calculators that do all the detail. So those are not back of the envelope calculators. They do the cash flow projections. They do the goals orientation. Um, and the goals could be one year down the road, 20 years down the road. So so we, those calculators aren't designed for... Okay. For but at, at a bare minimum, obviously, as you mentioned, you've got the lead magnet where it's creating that um, way for you to reach out to a prospective client with actual context rather than the typical contact us page on a advice website where... You're just calling them and maybe they're, they're putting whatever they want in that rich text or long text box field. But you could even, you're actually calling them to discuss, obviously, generally, maybe the results of, of their inputs of that insurance uh, calculator or the, the back of the envelope model. But has that been a really great way for you to get context quickly and build rapport rather than, rather than starting from scratch every time with that prospective client? Yeah, so so it has. As I said to you, I was really lucky in the beginning. I picked up a, a yep. really material client. Yeah. What I have realized is this is a great way to get clients to engage and to put yep. some context and some meat onto the first first conversation. However, as I'm learning, the trick is still to get them to your website in the first place. Yeah. So we've got to get them there to play with the tools. No, it's a obviously that's an ongoing 
an ongoing challenge. Martin, I wanted to ask you, like if we went through a typical new client experience and process, at what points throughout would you utilize Engagement Hub? So if you take a, a brand new client, so if you consider a, a prospect possibly got to my website, got referred to me, and then let's say in a best case scenario, you use the insurance calculator or the retirement calculator, you would give me a call or I would reach out to that particular client and I would say, set up a time to meet with them and I would ask them to complete what we call a financial health report. It literally takes the client no more than five to 10 minutes. And it's not really about how much money you've got or what your budget looks like. It's, it's really qualitative things. And it gives me a really good understanding of how the client feels that they're sitting when it comes to three areas of advice, cash flow, wealth management, and contingency. They don't see the outcome of that until we're in the first meeting. And and what I often do is I get, uh, if, assuming it's, let's say, a husband and wife coming, I make them both complete it. And it's fascinating because when they come through, you actually say, really, guys, you're living in the same house and you feel, you feel like that. But it's a great, it's a great experience. Um, and it's a great starting point because you can very clearly say and see where the clients are feeling confident and where the clients are feeling insecure about their finances. It's a great place to hone in. We then have what I call a discovery, discovery sheet. And that's the, those are the only two pieces of tech that I use in my first meeting. So I literally pull out a discovery page and we put it on the screen and I ask the client a whole bunch of questions. Um, and, and many of these questions I've learned from, from coaches over the years and programs that I've been on, things like, um, if we're meeting three years from now, what needs to happen for you to feel that these three years have been successful? Um, what's keeping you awake at night? But a whole bunch of really easy qualitative things on top. You get in, clients feel really, really engaged. Um, and I'm getting information that I would, would not normally have got. Um, ask a few more questions of the client. Um, I've got a values conversation that we that we have. Following that, the meeting typically concludes. I let them ask any questions. Um, I explain to them that that meeting is really about me understanding them, about them understanding me and asking questions. And then I was figuring out if there's a, if there's a fit. What I previously used to do um, is I used to send my clients a, a very detailed three-page or four-page letter of engagement uh, that I wanted to contract with them. What I discovered is is the better the quality of that letter of engagement, the slower the, the turnaround time with the client signing it is. They almost felt stupid if they didn't ask their brother or their sister or their mother or their accountant, should they sign it. I've now put together what I call a proposal form, which is a one-page form. So everything I have the intention is to fit onto one page. It's one page full that talks about their their purpose. What is the reason that they want financial advice? Another block talks about their goals. We then look in the third quadrant about the strategies that we would explore, not the strategies we would implement, but the strategy we might explore. And the very last comment looks at what the fees would be to engage with us. Now transform that where the client would feel very stupid if they went to somebody and asked somebody to explain a, a very simple one-page picture. So we're finding that I send that through to the clients and we're getting a response pretty much the same day or the next day. Clients are fantastic. You've sort of you've got me. Let's let's move ahead. We've got file notes, which we on as one of the forms which I'm using all the time, and I've got a form called action items which we're using all. The time. When the clients then come through for the next meeting, when we're now starting to to really gather information, we have what we call a family tree. And if you envisage a typical fact find that us as an industry do, it's got everything. You as you create family members, so they grow up, they grow on the screen, and you've got the family tree coming out on the screen. You click on it, it asks you the date of birth, contact numbers, the employment details, all of that, and you completing that there and then. We have the values conversation, which is a, is a tool, and we have a goals conversation, and we also have a risk profiling tool. So I often ask the client to complete the risk profiling tool prior to that meeting, but if not, we just put it up in the meeting and they complete it there and there. So those are the initial pieces prior to the engagement. Once we do engage and we've put a plan together, and I'm talking about my practice, the one or two of the other practices are using more forms than I am, actually. Okay, yep. But 
once we put the plan together, so I generate an SA, and I'm using X plan to generate my SAs, I put together what I call a one page plan and to work. And that goes at the front of the, the front of the plan. So I say I'm doing it, but I've actually become quite lazy and my, and my error plan is actually doing it for me. We've got that and we've got a form that we call the what form. And the what form very, very simply in three circles summarizes every problem that we're looking to resolve. And then we've now taken the client through the uh, presentation of the SA and, and obviously the file notes are happening all the way through every, every sort of meeting I'm doing a file note, which by the way, I email through to the clients post a meeting. Okay. Because it's quite a pretty some looking file note. And then when it comes to the end of the year and we give out the annual um, renewal contracts and the FDSs, we've created a, a what we did for. So it's nice. a very simple way of saying, you know, we did investments for the client and what are the investments being? They might mean rebalancing. It might be selecting funds. It might be selecting equities. It's a very simple way of a client actually saying, okay, well, these guys did something for me. So an but FDS I'm, with context rather FDS than use of fee. FDS with some pictures. Nice. Um, and um, and those, are the, those are the forms I'm using all the time. So the, the calculators, the, the forms I'm using all the time. There are probably 10 or 12 other forms that I use sporadically. And I have one or two advisors that like, are saying to me, why are you not using this? Why, you know, this works really well, but not every form is appropriate for every practice. Yep. No, that's brilliant. And just at the, the start of that um, process with your, do you refer to it as the financial health check? So you've got that and obviously your discovery sheet. Like even that in itself is valuable and could actually be charged for rather than all of the other tools as well. Like at a bare minimum, you're delivering value uh, even before that first meeting. And I really like the way that you're sort of building that suspense and um, showing the results of their financial health check in the meeting rather than as soon as they've done the form. It actually probably creates a more of a reason for them to show up to the appointment as well or for both of them to show up as well. So the client and the client partner, that's brilliant. And what you've sort of described there is this is silver bullet territory in terms of financial planning software. I think with the the exception of SOAs in their current form, obviously before QAR um, comes to fruition in whatever way that, that comes, but we're actually probably on the precipice of ditching traditional financial planning advice tools altogether. And what I'm hearing is you can probably run your business with Engagement Hub being the core part of the tech stack, or at least 80 to 90% of where both yourself as the advisor or the practice and the client sort of live. So you've created a unified front stage and backstage experience. So we really have, if we if QAR comes in, it will be yep. utopia for me. Yep. Because what we're not generating at the moment is a an, an advice document that the okay. legislation currently wants. So we're not generating a statement of advice development. We're not generating a record of advice development. Okay. But we're showing the clients really, really simply what their advice looks like, what they need, and why they need it. Within the portal as well, we have the ability to disseminate information to see when the clients have read this. And that's what oh, my, nice. my compliance officer is loving, is yep. the fact that he can come in and actually see when the clients have downloaded a form or not downloaded a form and really? um, yep. clients can upload to us, we can upload um, to, to the client. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. So you're essentially ticking off, uh, at least in some regard, things like informed consent rather than just sort of fingers crossed or, or having a manual file note that says that you handed them the FSG, for example, like they actually physically downloaded it. Correct. And and I, I guess the you, you hit on a very good point there and I guess one of my frustrations is regulation has done a whole bunch of good things. We know yes. that it's also complicated life and made uh, made this an incredibly unpleasant journey for most clients. Yep. And the longer an, an advice document, the more opportunity there is to hide information. Yes. So when something sits on one page, there's nowhere to hide. Exactly and right. So when it comes to informed consent, I think we would be adding some value over there. Amazing. No, thank you for sharing that. That's is just brilliant. I think looking forward, 
you obviously mentioned the roadmap on on tasks and things of that nature. So further or in, further enhancing that client engagement uh, workflow and experience. Is there anything that might not be on the roadmap yet, but say it might be two, five, ten years time that you would say, "Gosh, I would love to have this sort of functionality in the tool." That maybe it's not possible right now. Maybe it involves AI or something like that. Is there anything or any point where you mentioned Utopia? Even post QAR, I assume the development won't stop. Are there things that you're thinking about that are sort of blue sky areas of development and functionality? So the only thing that I'm really, really, really thinking about at the moment is how we can get away from anybody needing to type into this computer to okay. get away from using the keyboard. So yeah. as me and you are talking right now, and I know that technology exists, I just can't get to everything right now. Yep. And it, if I'm sitting and having a conversation with the client, I would love nothing more than just to have that conversation, to ask the questions, let my software record the answers. Um, that's something that's, uh, that we will certainly explore over time. I was um, listening to, a, to an interview probably about 18 months ago. Um, in fact, the guy that's been mentoring me down this entire software journey insisted that I listen to a Steve Bezos interview. And he's asked the question to say, given that technology is changing so rapidly and things are different from one day to the next, if you were starting again right now and you were developing some technology for a business that you wanted to be still be in existence in 10 years' time, what would you do? Yep. And I thought the response was brilliant. And he said, I wouldn't try and second guess what's changing because we just don't know that. Mm-hmm. I would try and figure out what's still going to be the same. And I would build for that. And I looked at the advice industry and I thought, what is going to be the same? We're yep. always going to have to have great engagement with our clients. The experience is going to be the only differentiator because regulation is is forcing everything to look more and more vanilla. Things are looking the same. So you've got to create a great client experience and compliance is always going to be a big issue. So how do we create tools that tick those boxes in an advisor and client friendly manner? Yep, definitely. I guess the next question is, where do I sign, Martin? Like, it sounds like Utopia is around the corner. How can a practice or an advisor get involved and learn more about Engagement Hub? Can they go onto your website? Can they sign up? What does that look like? So, at this point in time, the, the best thing is is get onto the website. Yep. Um, drop us a note. We will be in touch with you really, really quickly. We are... Actively looking for advisors right now. We're on ground floor, yep. and we will we'll onboard you. It's it's a really really simple process, and um, and I, I have no doubt that you will get some benefits pretty much pretty much immediately. Yeah, and um, you know we we're in the early stages, so we're looking for advisors, and uh, and our pricing will reflect that at the moment. Yep, fantastic. Well, Martin, thank you so much for sharing all things Engagement Hub with us. We'll obviously put a link to the website in our show notes as well as maybe your LinkedIn or how to get in touch with you. Um, I'm sure that will be a point of interest. And yeah, all the best. And I I can't wait to see where uh, this takes us. Patrick, thanks a million. Thanks for the opportunity to chat to you. Beautiful. Thanks, Martin. (laughs) 